Okay, um, we're going to have a review on solving problems. So we're going to do a lot of problem solving in the class, um, and so we just need to get a review on this. First thing I want to say is that 90-95% of the problems we're going to deal with in this class are just algebra. So if you can recall your algebra class and how to solve algebra problems and do that correctly, you're, you're more than a, a big chunk of the way done for, as far as the math that's going to be involved in this class. So algebra, algebra, algebra. So one of the first concepts we need to just give you a reminder on is on setting up and solving problems and what it takes to actually solve a problem. So if I just write down this equation, we'll just say 2x plus 5 equals 3, I'm fairly confident that you can solve this problem. You know, we'll just go ahead and subtract 5 from each side, and so we'll get 2x is equal to negative 2, and then we'll go ahead and solve for x, and that gives us x is equal to negative 1. Fairly straightforward. That's, that's algebra, so we can go ahead and solve it. The key with this is that for every unknown variable that we're solving for, we need an equation. So let me just write this out. Number equations equal number variables. Put a box on that. So in this example up here, we had one variable x and we had one equation right there. And so we were able to solve it. If the number of equations does not equal the number of variables, we have a problem. And likely we cannot solve that uh, problem. So let's just say 2x plus 5 minus y is equal to 3. So in this equation right here, I have two variables, x and y. And I can go ahead and stare at this problem. I can try all of my um, different mathematical tricks. I can bring things to this side. I can divide. I can do whatever. And I will never be able to solve this problem. I just It's just physically, mathematically impossible to solve this problem because I have two variables, x and y, and only one equation. You're not convinced? Try it. You'll just sit there for forever just spinning your wheels. On the other hand, if I introduce another equation... You know, let's just say 3x plus 7 minus 3y is equal to 4. Now I can go ahead and solve this for x and y. And so I might use some of the tricks where I go ahead and bring all of the constant, all the um, constants over to one side of the equation. And in this case, we can just write this out, rewrite it as 2x minus y is equal to minus 2, and then 3x minus 3y is equal to negative 3. So that's just, again, I took this 5 over here, this 7 over here, and I got these two equations here. I can do things like adding them together, subtracting them together, doing all the things that you've done in al uh, algebra before. And so I can go ahead and take these two equations and solve for x and y. If you're not sure how to do this, pick up your algebra textbook, Google, uh, Google it on the internet, whatever, but this is just Algebra 101, and you should know how to do this, how to solve for x and y in this equations. What, what I've just shown you there is that uh, a concept that you need to be familiar with, and that's degrees of freedom. And the degrees of freedom is just a mathematical way to write out uh, the concept that I just showed you on the previous uh, page. But degrees of freedom is just equal to the number of variables minus number of equations. And so if I have, you know, for instance, example three variables, x, y, z, and I have two equations, that would give me a degrees of freedom of one. And we should know that can't solve this, unsmiley, or right there, not solvable. So we can't solve this problem if the degrees of freedom is one. 
or two or three or whatever it is. Degrees of freedom, zero, solvable. So we always need to make sure when we're trying to solve our problems that the degrees of freedom is zero or the number of variables and the number of equations are equal to each other. So in terms of practicality, what that really means is when we're going solving our problems, we're going to do a lot of material balance problems and, and so forth when we're looking at different processes, you need to make sure that you have the right number of equations for the number of variables you're trying to solve. So that means you need to identify your variables because if you don't have the right variables identified then you're not going to be able to solve the system out because you'll oftentimes these uh, um, problems will involve multiple variables and multiple equations so you need to identify the variables you need to identify the equations so this means that simply um, we need to know what our equations are so we can make sure that we have all the equations right. And one of the problems that I see all the time is that students will just start writing down equations and start trying to solve those equations without even realizing what they're doing. They don't put any thought into it, so they start trying to solve equations that you can't solve. They just start writing down 2x plus y minus 3 equals z, and then 2x minus z plus 7 equals 0. So they got these equations and then they'll start doing algebra and plugging and chugging and trying to go back and forth and solving these without even realizing, wait, I can't solve this. I'm missing a third equation in order to solve for my three variables, x, y, and z. So if you were given this problem, you'd look at it and you'd say, okay, something's not right here. I'm missing a, an equation. And that's when you go back and look at your problem statement, you look at your uh, diagram of your process or whatever information is given to you and you say I need one more equation and you need to figure out what that equation is before you solve it. Um, and so you would go back figure out that equation and then come back write that equation down and then solve for your unknown variables. Just writing down equations and trying to solve for the unknown variables without knowing that that system is solvable is going to give you it's going to give you a headache if you don't know what the right equations you need in order to solve for those variables. So you've got to be able to know um, what your variables are and what your equations are and what those degrees of freedom is so you can go ahead and solve it. And so that's the concept I want to leave with you here is that when you're setting up your equations and you're trying to solve for your variables, make sure you do the degrees of freedom analysis because that will tell you if you can even solve it. And if you can't, you need to go back to the problem and figure out a few more equations that you may need to in order to solve for your unknown variables. And again, setting up that problem correctly is going to save you a lot of time and headache when you're uh, trying to solve these complicated problems that may have three, four, five, six unknown variables uh, in, in the problems. So there you go.